okay in this problem uh, we'll take up a analysis of truss by stiffness method and we'll follow the transformation matrix of position so this is a truss what is uh, to be analyzed and the area of each member is 2500 mm square and Young's modulus is 2 into 10 to 5 newton per mm square so what we have here is one joint d and uh, which has uh, two degrees of freedom it can undergo horizontal and vertical displacements and at support b it is a roller support so one displacement is possible which is horizontal displacement so by this uh, the degree of uh, kinematic electromagnetic comes out to be three okay so we can even verify that with the equation j minus r okay uh, so with the three degree of indeterminacy uh, we have the three coordinates assigned over here coordinate one is at b support b which represents the horizontal displacement at joint b two represents the horizontal displacement of joint D. Three represents the vertical displacement of joint D. So these are the three coordinates. This is how I have numbered them. The direction what I have chosen is like this. Okay. And since we have uh, five members, there will be five elemental coordinates representing the uh, stiffness, elemental stiffnesses or displacement among the member. Now coming to the displacement matrix. Displacement matrix correspond to the unknown displacement that are there in this uh, truss. So we have three unknown displacement at three uh, locations, uh, sorry, at two locations at B and D. So these are the displacement what have been chosen delta 1, delta 2, delta 3. Delta 1 is horizontal displacement at joint B. Delta 2 represents the horizontal displacement at joint D. Delta 3 represents vertical displacement of joint D over here. So, according to the coordinates, those uh, displacements have been chosen here. So, once we have identified the unknown displacements in this, uh, we will go for uh, writing the force matrices. We have two force matrices, what are their uh, P and PL matrix. So, P matrix is the are the forces which are directly applied in the coordinates whereas pl matrix represents the forces which are applied other than the coordinates so pl matrix in this case if i consider the members in a truss there are no forces which will be coming on the members over here whatever the forces are applied are applied at the joints here we have uh, the pl matrix are consisting of zeros so it will be null matrix now P matrix will be the matrix which represents the forces which are applied at the coordinates directly in the coordinate. So if I take the coordinates one by one, in first coordinate there is no force which is applied in the first coordinate, so zero. Second coordinate has a force of 250 kN, but its direction is opposite to the direction of my coordinate two, so I take a minus 250. And the third coordinate we have a force of 300 kN. Again, the direction of this force is opposite to the direction of our coordinate, so it will be minus 300. So this will be totally the uh, P matrix what we have here. And after writing these force matrices, now we will go for uh, developing the. So we will go for uh, developing the element stiffness matrices. In case of uh, this truss members, the element stiffness is represented by this. Uh, uh, ratio a by l which will be the axial stiffness of the members so we'll take up uh, each of the member one by one and we'll write the element stiffness matrices for that number a to e the product a comes out to be 500 into 10 to 6 newton uh, newtons over here so this will be a into e okay so this is a constraint for all the members area is constant for all the so product A will remain same for all the members. Now taking one by one each of these uh, members over here. So what we have is uh, for A, B, C, D the length will be 4 meters. Yeah, so A, B and C, D the length of 4 meter. Uh, A, C and D, B have the length of 3 meter or 3000 mm. A, D has a length of 5 meters or 5000 mm. So if you take the ratio of this E to E divided by L for each of those members, this is what you will get the element uh, stiffnesses over here. So for A, B and C, D, it comes out as 166.67 into 10 to 3 newton per mm. A, C and 
uh, PD which are having the same length it will come out to be 125 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm and for AD which is this diagonal number it comes out to be 100 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm so all these uh, elements stiff uh, stiffnesses will be arranged along the principal diagonal of this unassembled stiffness matrix rest other elements will remain zero so this will be our k star matrix and uh, we need to convert this k star to the global stiffness matrix k matrix for that what we require is the displacement transformation matrix to obtain the displacement transformation matrix we have to apply unit displacement in global coordinate and find what are the displacement in the elemental coordinate so i'll take the first global coordinate here and apply unit displacement in this first local coordinate when i do that i'm pulling this number by one unit that is there is a elongation of one unit in member ab or one mm in member ab and in this member we have the first uh, elemental coordinate so first elemental coordinate value will be one okay rest of the will remain zero this member is perpendicular ab is perpendicular to pd so it will not have any uh, displacement uh, component in that direction and uh, so this will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, so that will be the first column of our displacement transformation matrix. Now taking the second global coordinate which is at D, I'll apply a 1 in 1 mm horizontal displacement over here. So this then, okay, uh, D, D dash is 1 mm. I need to find out what is this displacement along this coordinate. So third coordinate will not have any uh, will have one mm displacement so directly one will come in the third coordinate first and second coordinate they will remain zero third coordinate one fourth coordinate uh, will have a zero displacement over there okay zero and in the fifth coordinate we need to find what is the component of displacement so one into cos of the sine wave which is 36.86 degrees so that comes out to be 0.8 since all numbers are being elongated, they are being taken positive. So this will be our second column of the displacement transformation matrix. Similarly, uh, we'll give unit displacement in the third uh, global direction. Third global coordinate will be 3, which is vertically upwards. We'll apply 1 mm displacement in vertically upward direction over here. And find what are the displacement in all the elemental coordinates. So except the elemental coordinate uh, that is uh, 4 and 5 rest other will be 0 so in 4 and 5 what you find is in the fourth elemental coordinate there will be a displacement of 1 mm and in the fifth elemental coordinate the component will be 1 sine 36.86 degrees which comes out as 0.6 mm so this will be the third column of our displacement transformation matrix so this has been arranged in the displacement transformation matrix which will be a matrix of 3 by 5 now to obtain the global stiffness matrix we will use the relation k is equal to d transpose k star into d with that this is our uh, global stiffness matrix what we have here so after this the equilibrium condition will be used for evaluating the unknown displacements equilibrium condition says that net forces in any coordinate will be equal to forces due to the displacement p delta plus forces due to the um, number roots pl so on rearranging this we will find that delta is equal to q inverse into p so that k inverse has been calculated here and into p the p matrix what we have so that will tell us what are the unknown displacement delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 delta 1 displacement horizontal displacement at support p is 0 delta 2 is minus 0 0.742 delta 3 is minus 1.642 so these are the values what we have now for calculating the number process we will be taking d k into delta displacement transformation matrix d into k into delta over here so that will tell us what are the forces within the members so these are the forces what we have in all the five members which we have been calculated a b a c the forces are zero that is in a b and a c okay then coming to the rest three c d it is minus 249.5 pb minus 299.983 ab minus 379.965 so these are the forces in terms of kilometers